Uh, let's find the equation of a plane that goes through three points. And uh, at the end of this, what I'll do is give you a general plan of what to do. So say I know the points A, B, and C, and they fall in a plane. Uh, any three point, any three non-collinear points will determine a plane. Uh, if they're collinear, then there's an infinite number of planes that pass through them. But anyway, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two vectors. So one from A to B and one from A to C. And then what I'll do is I'll actually cross product those vectors uh, to get this vector, which is, um, so that's going to be AC crossed with AB. Um, and a property of the cross product is that it is actually orthogonal to both of the vectors that you cross to get it. So that means we're at right angles here. So that's a right angle and that's a right angle. And in fact, uh, the cross product we just found will form a right angle with every vector that falls in that plane. So um, imagine the vectors are actually on the table or the desk in front of you. Um, the cross product is going to come out of the desk, so like straight up. And if you put any other vector on the tabletop, uh, it would still form a right angle with the cross product. So that's the idea. So let's have three points. So A is going to be 1, 2, 1. B is 5, 3, negative 1, and C is 0, 4, 3. So I'm going to create the two vectors. I'm doing terminal minus initial, so uh, 0 minus 1, and then 4 minus 2, and then 3 minus 1. Um, and then the vector AB is going to be terminal minus initial. And now I will cross those, so I'm not going to show the work for that, but AC crossed with AB gives me the vector negative 6, 6, negative 9. Um, and what I'm going to do is actually, see, I see that uh, 3 goes into all of those. So the vector I'm going to use is actually going to be the vector negative 2, 2, negative 3. Um, if you think about it, any scalar multiple of the cross product is also going to be normal to the plane. Um, so, any, well, as long as you don't use 0 as your scalar, which would be a weird thing to do. Um, so I'm going to use negative 2, 2, negative 3. You get the same result if you use negative 6, 6, negative 9. So you don't really need to do that, but... Uh, makes all the calculations I'm going to end up doing a little bit smaller. Okay, so next step, I'm going to let the point x, y, z be some generic point that uh, falls in the plane. So uh, there's that point. And the next thing I'm going to do is observe. So this is where I talked about any vector in the plane being orthogonal to uh, the cross product. So this vector from b to that point would work. This vector from c to that point, and uh, this vector from a to that point. Any of those vectors would um, be orthogonal to the cross product. And so I'm going to choose to use uh, the point A because it's the first one. So that's what I'm using. But if you use any of them, you'll get the same result, which is a little weird and why I think people don't really like this process all that much. Um, but anyway, so that's my generic vector in the plane. And I have my cross product. And uh, the whole point of this is that if you do the dot product of the cross product with this vector, you'll get zero, right? So the cross product is orthogonal to the plane, so if I dot product that with any vector in the plane, I have to get zero. So I'm just going to write that out. So what I get is negative 2, 2, negative 3, dot, x minus 1, y minus 2, z minus 1 should be zero. Um, that's one equation of the plane, and you could leave that. Sometimes you'll see that. Um, what you might also see is actually doing the dot product. So uh, negative 2 times the first thing, plus 2 times the second thing, and then minus 3 times the third thing will still equal 0. And then other times you'll see this expanded out. So negative 2x plus 2y minus 3z equals negative 1. Sometimes you'll see that negative 1 brought over to the other side is a plus 1. Sometimes you'll see uh, dividing through by negative 1 to get a leading coefficient that's positive. Uh, whatever you do, that's the equation of the plane. The advantage of that last form is that uh, it's really easy to substitute into. Uh, so that's actually probably the form that you'll be asked to put your final answer in. Um, you can check your answer by taking any of the point, or all of the points rather, A, B, and C, plugging them in and just confirming that it's true. And it will be. So let's get a general plan for how to do this. So you do the same thing every time if you have three points. And in fact, a lot of the time what you do is you create the situation where you have three points and then do this. So uh, the first step is you're going to make two vectors out of those three points. And uh, it doesn't really matter what two vectors you make. So uh, whatever you do, that'll work out. Uh, the next step is to cross product the two vectors that you found. So we're going to cross product those. That gives you a vector that's normal to the plane, so it's as if it's coming straight off of your desk, um, perpendicular to it. 
And then we're going to make a generic vector in the plane. Um, and we'll do that by using uh, the point x, y, z, and literally any other point in the plane. Um, so that'll give us our generic vector. And then we will use the fact uh, that the cross product is orthogonal to the plane, which means that the dot product of your generic vector and the cross product uh, is going to be zero. And that's how you get the equation. Then you can expand it if you want to, um, or whatever's called for in the situation. But that's how you do the problem, so I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.